Good afternoon, everyone. This is Hunger Solutions New York. Um, this is Diane Lizette, and Patty Dubell is here with me for your campaign launch today. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to ask if anyone, uh, if you can hear me, can you please raise your hand? I want to make sure our audio is going out okay. All right, very good. Okay, and also I just want to make sure that everybody can see my screen okay. Um, so can um, you just show me, uh, again, a show of hands to make sure you're sh seeing the screen about um, the audio information. Excellent, very good everyone. So I'm just going to leave this information up here about um, the audio sign in for just a couple of seconds while we get rolling. Um, some people may be new to go to webinar and might need just a few, a minute or two to figure out um, how to enable their audio. Um, again, as I said, we're going to be going over today your first campaign of the new year, um, your 2019-20 contract year. And we're going to get started, and um, I will let you know that we will take questions um, at the end. But as you'll see, if you click on that little orange box up in the corner with a white arrow on it, um, you do have a question box. And what you can do is you can type your questions in there. You can type those in at any time, and then we'll answer those at the end. Um, I would encourage you to put your questions in as you think of them, um, and that way there we can address them and you won't forget them. All right, so I'm going to turn this over now to Patty, and she is going to give you some information that will look more specifically um, at your current campaign. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to your first statewide campaign for the contract year. Success, success starts with school breakfast. That's a tongue twister. Um, and just remember, uh, the requirements are you must submit two outreach activities per campaign. Um, and your first activity must be placed by the first day of the campaign. Your second activity must be placed by the second week of the campaign. And all outreach for this cam campaign must include the slogan, Success Starts with School Breakfast. Um, and also remember that um, all outreach has to be approved by your contract manager uh, prior to placement. Um, most of the campaigns run about six weeks. And as you can see from above, um, this one runs from August 27th through September 6th. So that's a little bit over four weeks. So this is a little bit of a shorter campaign. Um, and your first activity is going to be due 8:27 and your second activity is going to be due September 6th. I'm going to turn it back over to Diana, and she's going to go over the campaign companion and the toolkit. Okay. Now, for those of you who are brand new, um, you might not know how to log in to get your campaign companions. I'm going to go right back to the very beginning of our public facing website, our Hunger Solutions New York website. And what you will do is you will scroll down and you'll see a sign in. And this is where you're going to sign in to the NOAP network, the NOAP only portion of our website. And you will put in your username and your password. And log in. have a very long password. There we are. And then you'll see this funny looking screen come up. All you'll want to do is you'll totally ignore all of this and go up here where it says Hunger Solutions where the little house is and click on that. This is going to bring you into the NOAP network. As you can see, it looks just like our, our public facing website, except up here you'll see NOAP network, where you can go to the NOAP only section. And you'll go down to Outreach and Resources, and this is where you're going to find your campaign materials. Here we are, the very first campaign of this year. Success starts with school breakfast. 
And under here, you're going to see a whole bunch of resources for you that you can use. The very first thing I'm going to look at is the School Breakfast Campaign Companion. Now, the Campaign Companion is a multi-page document, and it has everything from the goals of the campaign, the audience, your campaign dates, your slogan, the disclosures you need to use, all the way through. And this time, we also have some additional information on here, like talking points and facts about school breakfast that you can review um, as you get a chance. This is just background information for you to have, so you can um, have a little more information about school breakfast um, in New York State. Um, and you can click on these links, for example, um, to get further information about such things as how breakfast is paid for. And we'll take a look at that actually in just a little bit more in a second. Here are some great ideas to promote it in the school breakfast in the community. Um, and so ideas for placement. This is one of my favorites if you can do it. Connect with the school to get your contact information on the printed menus sent home with students. I think that's a fantastic outreach piece. So if there's a way you can do that, that's great. Also, um, have school meal applications on hand, and I'll show you where the application is. Something that's very important, though, I want you to remember. Keep in mind, you're only funded to do SNAP work and child nutrition work under NOAA, um, filling out the SNAP application only. So you can't assist families in filling out the school breakfast application. So you can refer them to the school. The school can certainly help them do that, absolutely. But you as a NOAA coordinator can't help assist that family in filling out the school breakfast application if you do give them one. So please know you can't do that, but you certainly can give them one and direct them to the appropriate person at the school. Oh. Yeah, and, and just to keep in mind too, if, if, your, if your households are approved for SNAP, um, they're going to be eligible for um, free free school meals. Any meals that school provides, um, a child who, who is on staff is going to be eligible for those meals. Okay. Now we're going to go back. We're going to look at a few things that we have here in the Campaign Companion. Um, it, those of you who have seen Campaign Companions before might notice that we don't have any um, Spanish translations yet of our outreach materials. They'll be coming within a few days. We, of course, have to have those translated appropriately and correctly. So those are in the process of being translated, but they will be uploaded here absolutely for your Spanish language versions of our outreach. Um, look at a couple here. For example, here's one. And bring it up. And here's a nice flyer that you could use. And just keep in mind, down here, you'll want to take in here and put in your agency name. You'll want to put in your county served, if you are upstate, and your phone number with your area code. We've reserved a spot right here for your agency logo, so you can put that in. Um, if you choose not to do that, it's as simple as going up here and getting on these little corners and right clicking on it and, put, and clicking cut, and that will get rid of that box. So if you're going to print these out, you'll want to get rid of that box if you're not going to put your logo in there. Otherwise, you'll have this, this little grayed out area. So you'll want to get rid of that if you're not going to put the logo in for your own agency. Okay. And also, um, I wanted to show you a blended ad. Now, a blended ad is going to talk about both school breakfast and SNAP. As you can see, success starts with school breakfast. So we have our slogan for our child nutrition campaign. School breakfast is a great way for kids to start the day. And another way to stretch your food budget is up to apply for SNAP. So we had a little change in how um, you are going to pay for these um, with a blended ad. Um, if it's going to be printed in-house, if you're going to just run it through your copier in your agency, then this would be taken out of your materials and supplies budget, okay, if you print it in-house. If you're going to send it out to, say, a printer like, or to, like, Staples or something like that, then that would come from your outreach um, budget, and you would need, obviously, your um, all your outreach materials to go with that. Um, for example, the 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 quote or the invoice from Staples. 
and from or from your printer. So you'd need that supplemental material to go with it. But again, if you're going to print it in-house, um, you can do that um, through your materials and supplies budget. Again, that's for a blended ad only, which means it talks about school breakfast and snacks. But just to add to what Diane is saying, you'd still submit your outreach request like you typically would, and you'd attach the flyer, but there's like an additional comments box down at the bottom. You can just put in there um, in-house printing and then just put the number of copies that you're going to be printing. So this way your um, con contract manager can see how many you know flyers you're printing or whatever it may be that you're putting out. Also, in addition to flyers, this time we have a sample op-ed, and this would go to your local newspapers, for example, um, and you'll put in the date, all the information to the, news, to the newspaper, the editor, put in your name, agency, phone number, et cetera, and what this is, this is an education for education. This educates your community about school breakfast. And again, this also is an outreach piece, so you're going to, again, have this approved by your contract manager and do an outreach approval request for this as well. Okay, let's go back. Down here we've added some things this time that are some additional resources for you. For example, we have the Hunger Solutions New York um, School Breakfast Report, and that can give you a lot of in-depth information on school breakfast. Also, you have um, down here the income guidelines for free and reduced price meals, which I'll talk about in just a second. And here is that application for free and redu reduced price school meals. And you can print that out and give that um, to folks you're working with if they should need it. Again, those um, individuals, those households that are SNAP eligible um, don't need to have an application. They should just contact the school and the school will guide them using their SNAP uh, case number um, to get free to get free meals. Okay. Um, something else here is the New York State data site. Um, this is again just for additional information for you if you'd like to dig a little bit deeper and look at for example uh, information on your school district and the number of students who are um, qualified for re reduced or, or free meals. And then I want to just look at this guidelines for a minute. These are the guidelines for this year. This is a federal guideline sheet. So what I want you to know is when you're looking at this, where it says free eligibility scale and reduced price, New York State doesn't really have a reduced price category anymore per se. What happens is for students in these income categories right here, where it says free and eligibility scale right over here, those students will eat free. These students will eat at no cost. I know that's a silly co contradiction, or why is one no cost and one free? The reason is for these students in this income bracket over here, the state is picking up the cost of their meals. Okay, so, this, so the students are still going to be screened based on their annual family's annual income and household size, but these students are free and these are at no cost, and that's just basically a jargon term, meaning if they're in this, category over here, the state is going to pick up the cost for their meals, so it will be no cost to the family. That's what that means. And there is some um, information on that in your campaign companion, but just know that for anybody who's in this, these categories right here, um, in terms of household size and income, it's going to be free, aka no cost for the students to eat their meals at school. All right, let's go back to our to our campaign companion for a moment. Oh, I actually X out of our campaign companion, um, which is okay because we're going to come back into our actual um, our actual PowerPoint here on our um, on our um, presentation. Um, so just know that uh, if you have any questions on that about that you know, free reduced price, um, just shoot me an email, um, Diana, and I'll, we'll, at the end I'll put up my, my slide with my information. Um, and I will get that to our correct point person here. Um, our uh, child nutrition specialist is out on maternity leave, but we do have our uh, director of uh, public affairs who can answer questions. 
And so if you have any questions on that, um, once you get through reading the campaign companion, um, let me know and I will get those to Sherry Tomaski, our, our public affairs director, and again, send them directly to me. Um, but keep in mind, your requirements are just what we go over today. You know, doing your outreach activities, placing your placing your outreach activities in the community. That's really the heart and soul of your job as a NOAA coordinator. Now I'm gonna turn this back to Patty. So we encourage you to distribute your outreach um, to as many locations as possible. And I know that a lot of you worked very hard on your group list. So use those group lists. Um, and just remember, you can always put community distribution. And what that means is to your contract manager, it means that community distribution means that you are actually going to use um, locations on your group list. So you'd have to get three specific locations from that group list, and then you're able to um, go to any place on your group list that you listed. So for all of you that spent quite a bit of time, which is most of you, on your group list, uh, great job, and that will help you, you know, throughout the year. And just remember, you can also add additional locations to that group list throughout the year. Uh, just let your contract manager know, and they can add those, or you can add them and resend it to your contract manager. Um, you know, just keep in mind, and you can use the campaign companion to help you think about where low-income families might visit in your service area. Um, and thinking of child nutrition. And I know Diana went over a couple of the flyers. Just remember that if there's a cost to uh, like a blended ad, so if it's talking about SNAP and it's talking about child nutrition, then the money would have to come from your child nutrition category, which is very limited funds, and also your, um, your SNAP because it's a blended ad. It's talking about both. Um, And just remember, you have to uh, complete two activities per campaign. Um, and just remember, you also have to choose two different activities. So you would, um, you can do a flyer for your first activity, and a, for your second activity, you might want to do op-ed. But just keep in mind that um, if you do choose to do a flyer for your first activity and a flyer for your second activity, it has to be a different flyer. So it has to have, obviously, it would still have the slogan, but it would have different wording on it. So like I said, you can do any combination of any of these activities, but as you saw for the school breakfast program, um, when Diana went over the toolkit, most of them are flyers, and I, I believe you had like an op-ed. And then just remember, what does it mean when we say that it needs to be placed? That would be the first day that you actually go into the community and you place that particular flyer or the op-ed ran on a particular day. So the first day that you hang, if you go to decide to go to a library, it would be the first day that you hung that flyer in the library. And just remember, this campaign goes about a little bit over four weeks. So you can continue to place outreach throughout those four weeks. And again, just a reminder, all outreach must be approved by your contract manager. Okay, I'm going to just check our questions over here. And I'm going to just pull the, take a look here and see what we've got. And as far as questions, um, Yes, uh, some some communities, um, when it comes to free um, meals in schools, um, sometimes uh, there are there is no free breakfast or lunch. Um, that's not common, but yes, it can happen. Um, unfortunately, um, how meals are handled across New York State um, is kind of a checkerboard. Um, one thing to know that is the more um, families that you assist with SNAP uh, and the community can help areas become um, more likely to receive free school meals um, through a program called community eligibility. Um, and that that's a, can be a little bit confusing, but just know when you're helping families get SNAP, um, ultimately it can help impact the number of how, uh, households that are recognized in the communities getting SNAP, and that can lead to um, those communities then getting free school meals. 
Um, so just know that. So when you're doing your 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 SNAP work, you're off for families with children. Um, you're also doing good work towards school breakfast. But yes, I understand that in some places that happens. Um, and let's see if there's any more questions here. Okay, there is. There aren't any more questions. Um, thank you for giving us that information um, about your particular area where um, where you live. Again, um, we know that there are certain communities where school breakfast is not as readily available. But in those districts where there's higher levels of poverty, then you'll see different um, um, strategies for providing free meals for one or more meals a day for students. And just a quick reminder, um, if you have leftover promo items or flyers from last year, so 2018, 2019, um, just be sure to submit a new request um, in the new year um, so you can continue to distribute those reinforcement items or flyers or whatever you have left over from the previous year. All right. Um, this is not related, um, but there is a question about heat and eat tote bags, heat and eat materials. Patty, did you want to address that? Because I know tote bags have gone out for this campaign year. Yes, actually, we just talked about that in a field apps meeting. Um, we keep bringing up those heat and eat tote bags. Um, as of right now, um, Linda still wants everybody just to hang on to them. Um, and she said that she understands that that can be a burden for the fact that, you know, you have a big box that you're storing and then you probably just received all of your new tote bags. So you're just adding um, quite a bit of storage. So hopefully this year, um, if, if we're not go going to do the um, heat and eat initiative or campaign or anything around that, then um, hopefully we, we can, We'll definitely send out an email and you guys can start dispersing those tote bags. And um, there's a question about what about um, school breakfast for those students who may have uh, religious restrictions or guidelines on what they need to eat, um, or maybe it's cultural. Um, that's handled school by school, um, so we can't really address that. That's something that we would have you would have to find out um, from the school. Um, but again, know that as a NOAA coordinator, um, your job is just pr to promote school breakfast, um, not to get to the application. But if you would like some uh, additional information on how schools handle um, certain cultural or religious preferences or needs, um, please contact your individual schools because it might not even be district-wide, it may be school by school. So please talk with your local schools. Plus that's a good way to get to know the food service folks at your school and maybe get that uh, your outreach into the school, into backpack programs or onto the school menu. So you want to make those connections with your school and that would be a great thing to ask. Um, also, when somebody asked when this campaign is due, um, the person came in a little bit late. And I'm sure, I can go over that again. Okay, Patty, thank you. So the campaign runs from August 27th through September 27th, and then your first activity would be due um, August 27th, and your second activity is going to be due September 6th. All right, I'll hold on just for another minute and see if we have any additional questions. And you can see there's training at hungersolutionsny.org. That is actually your email so you can reach me. Um, it makes it simpler than my name. And that comes right to my uh, mailbox. So if you, again, if there's further questions later on, um, training at hungersolutionsny.org. And you can send questions to me and I will um, answer those. Or if I don't know it, get the answer from the appropriate person here at Hunger Solutions New York. Uh, I'm going on vacation. Can I do the campaign now? <clears throat> so what you want to do is just reach out to your contract manager and uh, your contract manager would coordinate that with you. Any other questions? I'll wait another few seconds to see if anybody else has any more questions. I know it takes a little bit longer to type um, than it does to ask a question um, verbally, so I'll just wait just a minute more. Um, is a blended flyer considered one activity? Uh, yes, it is, absolutely. Um, it has both messages in it, but it's one activity. Again, an activity is a flyer, an op-ed, 
So for example, I'll reiterate what Patty said. If you want to do use two flyers for two activities, they have to be separate flyers, different images, different words. So for two activities, you can use two different flyers, um, but again, they have to be different flyers. Um, but yes, um, with blended at, with that um, blended activity flyers, yes, that counts as just one because it's a single flyer. And just to add something, if you are going to submit, um, just say you wanted to do a flyer in Spanish, you also have to attach the English version of that same flyer. Um, not all your, not all the contract managers can read Spanish, so what you want to do is just let them know this is the flyer I'm going to be using, um, and it's obviously in Spanish, and then you'd have to attach also the English version along with that. Patty, could you address for us since um, the first day it's due was the first day of NOAA um, uh, training for new NOAA coordinators? Um, August 27th is the first day of the training. Um, how a new NOAA coordinator would handle putting their um, information into the community for this particular campaign when they're going to be here at Albany that day? Okay, so what you do is just reach out to your contract manager and let them know that you are going to be here in Albany for the new NOAA uh, training, and they'll work out with you what would be the best um, time frame to put that first activity up. Uh, there's a question on can they use blended promo items? So if it had the slogan on it and then you decided to do a blended, um, I, I, guess the, I guess I'm trying to think of how, how you go about doing that. Um, obviously, because you'd have to talk a little bit about SNAP and you'd have to talk a little bit about the child nutrition program. So definitely reach out to your contract manager and they could help you or, you know, talk that through with you. Um, obviously, if you have a big enough promo item, you definitely could probably um, have a blended message. Um, but it is pretty difficult to find that, but definitely reach out to your contract manager and they can give you some guidance around that. And is there, let's see, will we, I'm just going to go through and see if there are any other questions. Okay, that looks like the end of our questions for today. Thank you, every, everyone. Uh, and again, if you have questions on um, at all about um, how to do a campaign, what an activity is, about the placement dates, um, what needs to be submitted on your outreach approvals, please reach out to your contract managers. Um, your contract managers are there to assist you on a day-to-day -day basis with outreach questions, and so please always reach out to them. Um, they are there to help. Thank you very much. Um, I will be seeing uh, some of you um, at the uh, training for new NOAA coordinators in just a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. And um, with that, I'm going to say thank you, Patty. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. All right, everyone, thank you very much. Have a great day, and thanks for joining us.